Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman, members, and um, I'll, I'll go ahead and open us, open us up, and then I'll, I'll let uh, the Attorney General take it from there. Uh, many of you may remember last year um, we had a bill that basically put together uh, a group of stakeholders to try and figure out what to do as um, monies from the opioid settlement comes into the state and how do we handle those in the best way possible to prevent some of the things that have happened in terms of the opioid crisis going forward. And this bill has, uh, has been put together as a result of all those meetings with the stakeholders. And so what, what we're gonna do uh, with those dollars is really enhance our drug and court system, drug court system, which is uh, by far one of the most um, successful programs we have in this state. And one of, the, one of the downfalls that we have in that program is simply the funding in the more rural areas and places where money is just not as available as it is in, in others. So this is really a, a mechanism to help enhance that. And from there, I'll let uh, Attorney General Jeff Landry take over and have um, explain a few more details. General Landry, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, members of the committee. I'm really proud to be here besides my great friend, Senator Ward, who made this bill possible. Uh, you know, he sponsored a resolution last year to create the Drug and Specialty Courts Commission. Uh, and, I, you know, it's great when you think about it. This is exactly when you, when you create a task force or you create a study group, you actually want action. And so I'm proud uh, to be here today because this is a result of a lot of hard work by men and women uh, who are part of that commission. We had a number of stakeholders uh, who, um, who are here today as well, who worked all through uh, the pandemic to ensure that this bill uh, made it this session. And the, the, commission's, the commission was basically tasked with building a framework to ensure that we leveraged future opioid settlement dollars for the expansion and improvement of drug and specialty courts. And that's exactly what we have here today. This bill serves three important purposes. It increases the number of people screened for eligibility by reimbursing the cost of drug testing at the booking stage, something that actually the legislature requires statutorily, but we've never been able to fund. It preserves the, pro uh, the, uh, the program's autonomy by utilizing the drug and specialty court office's expertise and the administrative st structure that's already in place. It creates a dedicated supplemental funding stream that is monitored and directed by an administrator with the authority to restore the current status quo in the event that funding, <clears throat> uh, that funding falls. And under our framework, the program will see more eligible participants, competitive pay for treatment professionals, and better results for graduates and communities. And how much better, I would tell you, three times better. You know, what's interesting is that since 2015, over 30 percent of Louisiana inmates released in a given year will be rearrested. I mean, think about that within three years. That's a 30 percent recidivism rate. Drug court historically has had as low as a 6.7 or what I'd say a 7 percent recidivism rate. You've heard story after story after story about how those that graduate from drug court uh, get an opportunity to find work earn a GED, secure housing. And of course, all of these things create real benefits for next generation. You know, one of the most interesting statistics that came out of the commission was looking at the number of drug-free births that this program uh, has, has, has allowed mothers to have. So we've had over 700 babies, meaning people, women who have gone through drug court, who then got pregnant drug-free. And think about, just think about that statistic and what effect that have. That statistic alone justifies the 14 to $16 million in state funding that this program receives in a year. But of course, it's far short of what it's needed to maximize the, our, our opportunity. This bill is designed to capitalize on a potential funding source, and that being a certain percentage of the monies recovered from the settlements against those who are responsible for this epidemic. The enhanced drug court legislation will work as following. Upon arrest, individuals will be tested and then given a 10-question screening questionnaire to determine if they meet the criteria for drug court entry. Uh, 
The costs associated with this step will be reimbursed to eligible law enforcement offices through the Louisiana Commission on Law Enforcement. Once screening indicates a substance abuse disorder, the individual will be given further screening to evaluate the extent of their addiction. These assessments are conducted by a treatment professional who determines whether the individual is suitable for drug court. After that, a, the judge and the DA consent to participation. The individual pleads guilty to a crime and is sentenced to complete the treatment program. These costs and the program costs are handled by the Louisiana Supreme Court Drug and Specialty Court Office, who administer the current state funding and monitor the program for compliance. As mentioned earlier, the funding stream would originate from opioid settlements. Those dollars will be deposited into a newly created drug and specialty court fund administered by the Department of Justice. To be clear, I want to make sure you understand that my office's duties would be administrative only. We would only handle the initial distribution of funds to LCLE and to DSCO, who would then handle payments to their respective entities. We do this, we, you know, this is not new for the Department of Justice. Many times there are pass-through dollars. We just ensure that the fund is administered properly. This legislation actually represents a new direction for Louisiana. And that is, instead of doing a lot of nothing when we get a, a settlement, this is an opportunity to do something great and effective. We had some great people on this task force. I see a Senator, I mean, Representative Denise Marcel is here. She was part of that as well. You know, instead of having monies collected, <clears throat> fragmented to numerous projects, this is a worthwhile endeavor that will have unlimited benefits to the state. We have the ability to address addiction and the devastation that addiction causes in wrecking our state and also to help drive crime down. We all know that we are experiencing a crime wave. This is an opportunity to actually do something positive uh, to basically affect crime. We can save families from destruction. We can save the unborn from illness and suffering. And we can save our loved ones from a deadly cycle of addiction and incarceration. And so I thank you for your time and I ask that you move favorably on this bill. Thank you, Mr. Attorney General. Senator Abraham for some questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, okay, so I think you said it. I just want to make sure I'm clear in my mind. Um, before we set up this fund, where was the money? How was the, where was the money, and how did it get to the to the testing and those sorts of well, things? Well, so so currently uh, we don't have the money yet. Uh, this is all contingent. In the past, what, oh, in the past, in, in in the past, in the past, basically, um, unless you were going into drug court, you, you want to answer? Yeah. So right now, the Supreme Court and through appropriations, uh, we we fund a drug court. And but that requires and that's why if you look, there are certain parishes that, that don't have drug courts is because there's limited state dollars that can go to that. So in, in a lot of uh, areas, if there's not other funds to come in and from their local ability to be able to try and supplement what what they get out of the Supreme Court, they're just not able to they to have the the drug court. And so what this would do is we, we would set up the funds so when the settlement does take place and the funds do start to, to come down, the money will go into that fund and it'll be utilized to expand an already very successful program. And that would include in the parishes that, that don't have this because they can't afford it, this would allow those parishes to be able to afford those things. Okay, so the money that, that, that's going to certain parishes now, Mm -hmm. Will that money continue to go there in addition to this? Okay, that's what I was Absolutely. trying to get. And that's, and that's very important. Thank you, Senator, for, for bringing that point up. I would continue to urge the legislature to continue to fund our drug courts at the current level. This is basically a supplement of that that will allow us to enhance the drug court program throughout the state of Louisiana for the next 18 to 20 years. Okay, so what happens, uh, I, I read that, uh, if it ever gets to 10, it starts when it gets to 10 million. Okay. Now, do you anticipate that it, that uh, I think 15 or 16 million was going to be deposited in the first year? I think I thought I read that somewhere. Um, 
Well, what happens when it starts going down and it gets to the below the ten million mark? Do you anticipate that happening in this fund? We don't anticipate us uh, having that problem at least for the next eighteen to twenty years, based that upon okay. yeah, based upon what we believe uh, the settlement structure looks like at this time, and uh, and so you know I, I would anticipate that by year fourteen or fifteen the legislature could address it. We would see some of the positive effects of these this program, uh, and either determine whether or not the money is con- still needed or whether or not the legislature wants to fund it in a different manner. Yeah. No, and I, I think it's, it, it's a good bill, and I know I'm, I'm delving into the finance side a little bit, which this is not what this committee is about, but I was just kind of curious that once we started something and then it was good and then it dipped below $10 million, we're going to cease, you know, uh, but if you're saying that it'll last a long time, we'll deal. Uh, that'll be after my time, so I'm not going to be worried about and that. And mine, hopefully, as well. <laughs> well I, I, think, I think it's, you know, and, and I'm not sure how much everybody – understands how settlements can be structured but in a lot of these very large settlements they'll structure them where the payout happens over a very long period of time so instead of the state or or all the states getting a lump sum of 500 million dollars they may get you know x amount of dollars for 20 or, or plus years and so as those dollars come in over that period of time, they'll they'll go over into this fund, and that's how it'll work. Okay. And, and we'll also, real quickly, Senator, we we'll also, we may, based upon the current structure, receive a lump sum within the first five years, and then the payments will fall off. That's why it's important to put it in a fund. Right. Of course, it may be able to generate some interest as well and stretch that money out. Okay. Thank you. Senator Ward, there are no further questions. Would you like to close on the bill? Senator Barrow has a question. Excuse me. Senator Barrow. Uh, 